Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. I want to start <clears throat> with a, uh, a little dialogue, a very small little play uh, in which I play both parts. And since I don't have a lot of room here, I'm just going to try and lean to one side or the other, depending on who I am. And hopefully I'll remember to do that. Here, have a gift. This thing, this present I got for you. Here. Oh, no, I couldn't. You shouldn't have. No, really, it's a present. It's for you. No, 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 I couldn't accept such a thing. Told you it was a very small little play. So uh, tonight I wanted to talk about the uh, perfection of generosity, dana paramita, as it's, as it's known in Sanskrit. And I will probably offer up more questions than answers uh, in this regard. Why do we do that? Why do we say, here, here's a present, no. Why is that? Do we feel somehow that accepting something from someone diminishes us? Makes us inferior to the gift giver? Do we do it out of fear, out of pride? What is it that motivates that? It could be all of those things. When we give, on the other hand, in, in light of the perfection of generosity, can we give with no expectation of anything in return? I'm not talking just about a quid pro quo, like I gave you this thing, so now you owe me that thing. I'm talking about even something as simple as expecting thank you. I'm talking about even being acknowledged for having given something. In the Mahayana Zen tradition, we say the bodhisattva vows at the beginning of, of every time we meet. And the first line is, sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all or help them all in our case. What greater gift is there than to offer someone assistance when they need it? What can we do that actually performs that kind of service, that assistance, that helping? It could be anything from effectively communicating. Um, reflective listening, it's called. See, this is the advantage to living with a social worker, is that I get to find out about all these interesting little phrases. Like, until I started living with her, I had no idea what passive aggressive meant. But anyway, reflective listening, for example. Someone says something, and the reflective listener, as the name might imply, reflects what the other person said. Oh, I'm sad about this. Ah, I see you're sad about this. 
what can I do to help? I'm not feeling well. Is there anything I can get for you? Or in this case, I see you're not feeling well. What can I get for you? To fully go with the reflective listening thing. In Mudita, the sympathetic joy, that uh, is one of the perfections. Um, it's joy that we feel for someone who isn't necessarily aware that we feel the joy. Uh, they may not have any idea whether you know we had anything to do with their reason for being joyful or not. We're just joyful because someone else is joyful. When we exercise the perfection of generosity, it's the same thing. We don't do it with a reward involved. As I said, no quid pro quo expected. No expectations whatsoever. It's just a matter of how may I help you by listening, or doing whatever. Um, there's a, uh, a sutra that uh, uh, lists a number of things in it about uh, generosity. It's the Noble Great Vehicle Sutra, and it lists the types of gifts. Noble son and daughter, how do bodhisattva great beings exert themselves in the perfection of generosity, noble son or daughter, the bodhisattva great beings exert themselves in the practice of generosity, starting by offering food, beverages, vehicles, clothing, and ornaments until they are able to offer the marrow of their own bones. Are you ready and willing to offer the marrow of your own bones? Are you ready to erase the arbitrary line that divides you and me, you and the other, and fully dive into the perfection of generosity? What does that entail? What is removed from that equation in order to do that? Uh, I have an interesting little anecdote here, which is probably apocryphal. And as such, I'll probably leave the names out of the people that I think were involved because it's not required to have them in there anyway. So a Zen master calls up one of his students, it being the 21st century, it was probably on a cell phone. And so the student answers and says, hello. And the Zen master says, how are you? To which the student says, oh, I'm fine. How are you? First mistake. The teacher didn't ask how the student was expecting the student to reciprocate with a, how are you doing? What kind of, of touche is that? Like, you ask me how I'm doing, so I have to ask you how, how you're doing too, so you don't have one up on me. Zen master just asked, how are you doing? You say, I'm doing well, thank you. And then later at some point or another, if in proper motivation you ask how the Zen master is doing, it's all good. So anyway, the Zen master says, I want to give you Dharma transmission, and I want you to be uh, abbot of the new Zen center. And the student says, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm not ready. I, uh, I, I can't possibly accept that offer. There has to be somebody more worthy than, than I am. 
at which point the Zen master says, I, 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 you just do it. Bye-bye. When we can take the I, 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 I out of the story, that's when we can start perfecting generosity. That's when we can do it with no sense of self, other, just, how may I help you? Someone else's success or ability to give or whatever doesn't really matter. It doesn't diminish us any. It's not pie, like there's only so much generosity to go around. We can keep on helping, 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 helping from moment to moment, constantly throughout the day, and continue from day to day. And in closing, um, I just want to leave you with a thought. Who are you to deny someone else the opportunity to be generous? <laughs>